Hey, Radiant Souls, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Heather. I am an intuitive counselor, author, artist, channel, psychic medium, animal communicator, energy healer, all of the things. And I'm on a mission to empower and embolden others to connect with their divine radiant light and honor the sacred connection with all life. We are at the very end of February right now. It's hard to imagine February for me it flew by. And if you haven't seen my monthly energy forecast for March, I'll put a link for that below. Please go check it out. It may help you. It may give you some tools or some perspective, a certain way to look at March to help you navigate the energies that are coming in. And about those energies, I also want to say they are <laughs> really kind of sharp and crisp and intense for a lot of us. So if you're if you define yourself, if you identify as someone who is kind of on the ascension path, or even if you just, you don't really care about the ascension part, but you're sensitive to energy, I want you to know that you're not alone. There are a lot of people who are feeling things in more of a physical sense right now than they do. There are codes and um, up levelings and, and things like that just floating out around in the atmosphere. And those who are sensitive and, and sensitivity isn't a straight line either, right? You can be sensitive to something one day, not the next. It's very fluid and malleable. So I just want you to be aware that there are a lot of people out there having uh, some physical symptoms or finding it challenging to navigate the exterior energy that, that's coming in for them. So that may look like I am really um, excited and, and energetic and I need to go uh, like do all the things and expand, expel all this energy that I have. But it may also look like I need to just kind of sit in the corner of my room and have a moment and be quiet. Um, and a lot of them are more, I won't say a lot, but many are, are touching us at kind of a, a mental level as well. So things feel different. Like um, for anybody who used to be really good at Maybe you learn a task really quickly. You read the instructions of something and you go and do it. That's becoming a little stretched out. It's it's somehow time is being reshaped as well. And that's a topic for a different day. But um, some of us are finding it harder and it's not just age related. Um, it's energy related, harder to do the things we used to do kind of easily in, in that linear thinking, logic brain kind of way. So that being said, a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, since we are at the end of February, going into March, I just want to highlight that March 3rd, 3-3, is the end of a couple of top tier early bird specials for two of my classes. So the first is meeting and working with your guides. And I'm really, really excited for this class. So many of you have enrolled already. If you haven't, jump in now and you not only get the lowest price for the course, but you also get free enrollment. You get a little VIP invitation to attend a bonus one hour live session with me. So I'm going to be doing more teaching than you find even in the course. The course is online. Go at your own pace. But if you're enrolling before 3-3, you can come to this session as part of your enrollment fee. And I'll probably be doing some channeling as well in that, which would be great. And um, if you can't make that 3-3 deadline, you still have time to enroll in the class. It's just the fee is a little higher. And if you want to join that live session, there's an extra charge for that too. But the class itself starts or will be in your student library on March 27th. Um, but I like to give people an opportunity to get in early and plan and, and get things situated. So I did a, a long lead time on that class. The second class that has the top tier early bird special uh, expiring on 3-3 is Energy Healing Principles and Practice. Uh, that's levels one and two. You can take one, you can take both. Overall, it's uh, eight weeks start to finish. We take a couple weeks off in between the two levels. Even if you don't really see yourself as an energy healer or someone who would do that professionally or, or in your own life, you, I'm gonna link the page, I'm gonna put the page link below because just take a look at it. A lot of what we're going over in that class um, helps your intuition as well. So your body is an instrument for your intuition and, and kind of knowing 
how the energy body works, how you can boost it, heal it, work with it yourself can be pretty empowering. And kind of an unintended benefit of that class sometimes is people start getting other downloads, they get transmissions, they meet their guides because they're taking that class and things just kind of open up new areas and perspectives for you often. So if you're interested in that, take a look. But uh, three, three ends the early bird special for that. The last piece of housekeeping, and then we'll jump into today's topic, into today's topic is um, time lapses. So for the energetic signature portrait, some of you have seen this when I've done it in interviews, and I'm gonna show a couple right now through the magic of TV. When I am creating an energetic signature portrait, I have the option to kind of turn on an internal camera that captures the different um, strokes and the different aspects of creation of this art. So I, I don't do it for every one and I have not offered these other than kind of talking points and interviews and fun things to look at together. I haven't offered them as part of the package when you buy the art until now you have the option and it is a separate option. So make sure when you're checking out, if you're getting the art, you're looking specifically for that option that includes the video, but you can tag that on now and it's really fun. And a lot of you have already caught that. I, I announced that in my newsletter last week and I, that got some people interested and excited. So if you wanna see that, it can be really kind of an additional level of insight for you, some additional healing. Um, you can see kind of the behind the scenes of your own art being created. So just wanted to mention that. All right, it's enough of housekeeping for today. I think the camera, I just kicked the table. I'm done, I'm done with this, I'm kicking things over. So I wanted to, or I feel guided to do some roll up your sleeves kind of work here for the next few videos. And, and I want to revisit in a new way with a new set of lenses. I wanna revisit the 12 steps to finding and shining your light. And these are steps that I identified, shameless self-promotion in my book, Hey Radiant Souls. For some reason, I'm being guided to say, talk about them, bring them back up, re-examine them and let people walk back through that together as a community. So that's what I'm gonna do. And um, the first step for that is tune out to tune in. Let me see if I can find. It's black and white art. You know what? I will pop the art up on the screen here for you. The, the art that I channeled and, and drew for this particular topic. So tune out to tune in or tuning out to tune in. What does that mean? Why is that relevant for us? Where do we do it well? Where do we not do it well? Um, and, and this book was written in the summer of 2020. We're almost three years past that date. How is this still relevant? Or how can we tweak it or hack it or do it even better? So for me, when we're tuning out to tune in, and we can look at, you know, there are different aspects to this, different levels and layers. We can certainly say, yeah, we have, um, and I'm going to be delicate with how I talk about it here because of the nature of sharing things in an online space anymore. But we have potentially influences around us that are trying to steer us or guide us in a certain way. Um, I guess that's the best way to say it. But I think it goes beyond that. So I, it's almost like that's a given. We won't even ex examine that here. Um, oh, and I do talk about that a little bit in... Um, the book has a companion masterclass. So you can, I'll put that link below too. There's gonna to be a lot of links um, where you can go through and, and I do different videos and different activities and homework that you can really dive into these topics. But so if we put that aside, just looking at the average day-to-day -day kind of what is taking your attention off of your divine radiant light. So for me, divine radiant light is that is your core essence. That is your authentic self. That is the peace of God that is you, that has chosen this human body, these circumstances, this lifetime to learn, to grow, to serve others, to expand. 
So sometimes we lose sight of that. It's like the car keys and, and we don't have like a good Apple AirTag for our, <laughs> for our authentic selves. Those suckers get left places throughout our lives and, and we get stuck and we think, crap, I don't feel like myself anymore. I don't even know who I am. Don't you love when people say that? I don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> That's such a, <laughs> such a good argument. And <laughs> anyway, beside the point, what happens is we get so distracted. So nurturing that, being in that frequency of yourself, being in resonance with your divine radiant light <sighs> takes a little effort. It, it, you're magnetized to it, of course. It's you. It's the very essence of you. It, it's like the little fire that you stoke within yourself. But it doesn't always come automatically that you sit in that space of fullness and divinity for yourself. And I want you to be able to, through these steps that we're going to talk about, starting with tune out to tune in, I want you to be able to recalibrate fairly easily with yourself. And I think there are different stages that we go through in life and different ways we're pulled off of our center. So when we're looking at tuning out to tune in, why we want to tune in is I want you to invest your energy, your attention, your love, your joy, your creativity in that divine radiant light. That doesn't mean to the exclusion of everything else. I don't recommend that you uh, or need you to go be a hermit um, and only exist for yourself. We're here to serve others and connect with one another. But if we're not doing that from a place of authenticity and from that divinity, that light, then you know what we're interacting is superficial and it's not really us. We don't we don't have enough skin in the game with one another. And we're not serving and supporting one another in the way that we intend to when we pop into this human meat suit. So tuning out can look like my favorite um, <laughs> is I, I am in a kind of constant um, struggle with tech. And I don't even mean AI and, and all of that stuff. Just the daily business of being human in the modern world anymore is um, all of the social medias, and there's not just one, they multiplied on us, right? We were just getting used to, <laughs> in my day, we were just getting used to MySpace. And then all of a sudden, boom, everything. And, and it just keeps growing and growing. And if you want to stay connected to people in that way, it, that's a useful tool. And all of these things are neither good nor bad exclusively. But I think we get kind of caught up and whether it was intentional or not, some of the uh, the downside of that is that it, it is activating kind of an addictive part of your brain. You want to see those notifications. You want to see likes and um, feedback on your posts. You want to see what someone's doing because it makes you feel like you're connected to them and and um, all of that. So when you're doing all of that, you're spending energy. I want you to think of your daily energy. And yes, we are limitless beings. But let's just say, for the sake of argument, your available energy that you can invest in something in any given day is like a preloaded debit card. So you load it up with a certain amount. Anything that you pay attention to, anything that you spend time with, anything that where your thoughts go, it's like swiping the debit card. So if you are, you know, every few minutes, what did somebody say? Do I have a direct message? Did I get uh, a text? Did this whatever upload yet? Do I, how many emails do I have? You know how it goes. If you look at the screen of typically anybody's phone, it's like, here's all these juicy little bits of goodness that you should be paying attention to. And we feel like, oh, I need to go do that. So you're swiping that debit card for yourself. If you're there, you aren't present. You don't have the availability for creativity, for really sitting in the seat of your authentic self. 
So I just want to bring that awareness to that in particular. It can also be your own limiting thoughts, your own limiting beliefs, getting stuck in the past, getting worried about the future, anything that that feels like you're being pulled out of the present. And I talk about this a lot. The present is, you know, there's that um, eye rolling kind of guidance that the present is a gift and it's the play on words but it, it really is it's it's where we create from it's where we are <laughs> the others don't really exist that's in your imagination whatever you think the future is going to be or whatever you think the past was maybe it happened that way maybe it didn't but you keep replaying it and you keep swiping that debit card and then we wonder at the end of the day why don't i feel like myself because you got nothing left You've given it all to all these other things, spaces, ideas, um, things vying for your attention. So, and I'm not saying, again, you have to divest yourself of all of that entirely. You can make small adjustments. For me, I don't have notifications turned on for any app. Um, I don't want my, like, I feel like too, my attention span is too easily captured I don't want it to go into those other places. So if I don't see a number or I don't see something pop up on my screen, then I'm less likely to get sidetracked with it. I like to consciously decide, okay, this is where I'm gonna check my emails between this time and that time. This is when I'm gonna look at my text messages. This is when I'm gonna check my social media. I like to decide when I do it. I don't want it thrust upon me. For me, that is like, oh, that's like a nightmare. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not good with that. You might be. Everybody's going to be different, but that's one way to do it. And, and, you know, there are those people who also, it's dinner time. We put the phone down. When did we used to just do that all the time? And now we don't really do it, but you set limits and, and times for those different things. And then you're empowered and you're deciding when to do them as opposed to like the onslaught of that, because it's also kind of creating I mentioned my attention span and what I found with myself, certainly it's it's also kind of creating this, we have the attention span of a gnat, right? Because we're getting everything in such small, tiny pieces that when we do have to sit with something for a minute, we don't even know how to do it anymore. We can't, we can't really invest our attention in, for the long haul very easily. So just some random thoughts today about tuning out to tune in. What ideas do you have? I'd love to hear maybe what you do to turn things off around you. And even if you don't categorize it as tuning out in order to tune into yourself, maybe you're just doing it to have a quiet day or peace of mind or or not feel anxious about something. Let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear what some of you are doing for that as well. So that's it, tune out to tune in. Step number one of finding and shining your light or reconnecting to yourself, Um, sitting in your authentic center, divine radiant light, however we wanna talk about it. I hope this was helpful, I'll see you next time.